All right, so Harry says, can you go over the diagnostic criteria for the Doppler? Um, well, let's, I guess, um, let's just talk about what we listen for, how we go about doing that. So the thing I'll tell you is that, um, the Harry, the, the Doppler, when you buy one, it, it comes with a great training DVD. Now, it's really boring. And when I, you know, it took me about three tries to get through that DVD without falling asleep. Um, but, you know, it was time well spent. But, you know, when we start to use that Doppler, one of the first things that we do is we're trying to identify and place the head of the Doppler uh, into the proper location in that little area right behind the distal area of the joint. And what we start to listen for is we start to listen for sound, vascular sounds. And if you remember in that distal joint space, we have that arterial venous plexus. We have the superficial temporary ar temporal artery and the temporal vein that's feeding into that distal joint space. And so we identify where we need to be by listening to our venous sounds and our arterial sounds in that distal joint space. Then we start to change the orientation of that Doppler head towards the anterior, towards, towards the anterior joint space. And what we start to do is once we keep angling that until we hear the sound, the vascular sounds disappear, all right? And then what we want to do is we want to listen to the position of the joint. So when we think about if we have our condyle here and we have our disc sitting on top of it and everything's in its proper place and this condyle disc assembly is great and it's bathed in synovial fluid, in our first bit, in those first 20 millimeters that we open, that's all rotation of the condyle in the glenoid fossa. And if so, if that medial pole is in its proper position and there's, it's bathed in synovial fluid, when that patient is slowly opening and closing in rotation, we should hear nothing. We should not hear any sounds at all. And that's what we're going to hear in a lot of our patients, and that's great. So that's a first really good start because that means that the medial pole is intact. And we would do that the same for both sides. Then what we want to do is we want to have the patient go from rotation now into translation when we go to full opening. And so now the center of force goes from our medial pole now to our lateral pole. All right, and so now if our lateral pole is displaced anteriorly, and as we go from rotation and translation, now we're gonna to start to pick up the sounds of crepitus or grinding sounds, or maybe even a staccato type of click or pop sound that we could hear through the Doppler as well. And so if we're hearing just kind of a grindy, crunchy sound as the patient opens and closes, then we have a good idea that maybe the lateral pole is displaced anteriorly and it's not reducing back into its proper place. But you may have a position, a patient where they go from rotation into translation and it kind of goes grind, 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 and then it goes silent again. Maybe you hear a little click as the, as the uh, disc recaptures or reduces back onto the head of the condyle. And so that's what we're listening for is we're listening for are we not hearing sound and that's good. And then we're listening to the times when we do hear sound, our crepitus or our grinding sound with a Doppler, and that also then helps us to determine where the position of the disc is based on whether the patient is rotating or translating. And so, and again, what Raj was saying, one of the great things about the Doppler is the patient can hear all this. So what I do is I explain to the patient exactly what we should hear and what we shouldn't hear. And so guess what? When they hear what they shouldn't hear, they start to get pretty concerned pretty fast because they want to know, well, is that normal? And you say, well, geez, we just talked about it, wasn't it? And then they want to know what? They want to know, what do we do about it? And when you get the patient that starts to ask, what do we do about it? That means you're in a really good place because the patient is ready and motivated to seek a, a solution for what it is that they're hearing. And the other great thing about it too is when we start off, we start hearing that, that arterial venous sounds in there. We hear the heartbeat of the patient. And boy, that must be serious because we're listening to the heartbeat, right? So, so now we have credibility that we're some sort of, I guess we're, we're more than dentists. Maybe we're some sort of a doctor, I guess, right? 